live from the Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The clock has started on round two. Qualifying the fastest 24 for the first round. We'll now find out who the fastest 12 will be to advance into round three. We already saw some notable names we thought were going to be moving forward who didn't. You heard A.J. Allmendinger how disappointed he was. Casey Kane missed. So I think this second round, you're going to have to be a little more strategic. Not maybe go out right away and give yourself time to pull the tires. Maybe look at the sky, try to find that cloud. As you see, Danica Patrick pulling to the right. She's decided, I don't want to be the first car in the race. I think it depends on your confidence level. If you're, a high, if you're highly confident you're going to move on to the next round, I think you want to go right. Because I think you want more tires to pull down in the last round. But, you know, you're not going to run quicker. And I don't think you're going to be able to run quicker without a timeout. So I think, I think you look at the clouds, you make a decision based on the cloud. But there's a lot going on here. In reference to the clouds, you got to remember, this is a two-and-a-half-mile racetrack. People don't know. There could be clouds in turn two, and it could be bright and sunny on the front stretch. Yeah, Rick, I just want a cloud over me standing on pit road. <laughs> that way, I feel like I, cool had, you I, I had a great plan. It was a good plan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It might not be fact. It was a great plan. And well, well, Steve, sometimes I think there is a black cloud that, that floats over <laughs> you. But maybe not today. Hey, you know, uh, you guys are spot on. A lot of these teams have been radioing it to their, talking to their crew chief, plotting their strategy, and they're talking about exactly what you guys are saying. Watching the weather, looking at the sky, as you can see here, hoping the clouds get here, they're going to stay up here road as long as they can, hoping for cooler temperatures. It, we talked about it earlier, it's so sensitive here. Any little change in temperature makes a big difference in speed. So if you think you can hold your car and send them out, and that's when you have the best cloud, that's what you do. If you think you have the best cloud you're going to get now, you go right now. So, you know, we talk about tire heat and all that. I think crew chiefs and spotters, they're thinking about the cloud. Chief of McMurray out on track. Anyone with a green chip beside their name is on track. And you see how many there are. This is a big facility. You talk about it, two and a half miles. You can fit five, six, seven cars evenly spaced around here. It, it shouldn't be affecting the handling of the cars. So that's a lot of cars around this racetrack. But we'll see how it works out for Jamie McMurray. He'll be the first one to go up on the clock. McMurray sets the pace at 48.98. He ran at 48.95 in the first practice, so he basically backed up his time. Tony Stewart to the top of the board at a 48.67. He ran at 48.54, so a little bit slower. That's what we were expecting for cars to slow down in this second round. Stenhouse Jr., fourth quickest. Dylan Harvick, Kurt Busch, Ryan Trex Jr., and Newman all on track, as well as Bain and Busher. And you talked about this being a really big racetrack, and there's enough room for all the cars, and that's right, but only if the spotters do their job. They have to time out when to tell their driver to start the car up, and the driver's got to get it fired. I know that sounds silly, but how many times, Steve, have you been part of a team where they're like, all right, fire your car, and, and the driver can't get it to fire, and so now you've missed your chance. So that, that spotter, crew chief, driver communication is so big, just to get being able to get out and get yourself a spot. And timing is so important. You don't want the car to get too hot. You want as you want as much horsepower as you possibly can have. So you don't want your car sitting there idling on pit road before it goes out. Yeah, I mean, it takes about 55 seconds to leave pit road and come back around and take the green flag. So for your warm up lap, and remember, you have to ice these engines down, get them very, very cold with the water, and that makes it harder to start when it's time to go. Tony Stewart still has the fastest lap at 4867. Hamlin's not going to beat him, but I think it's going to be good enough to move on. How about Tony Stewart? Back at the Brickyard. Had so much success here. There's still momentum going, coming with that team. Denny Hamlin was second quickest. Kyle Larson up to fourth quickest with his lap. You know, we, we talked about trying to get evenly spaced. We see Kevin Harvick here. But there's a stack of cars on the back stretch. I'm not sure they've done a great job of getting spaced out. What do you guys, I know you made a prediction earlier about advancing into the top 24. Can you predict the top 12? What, what kind of a time is it going to take to stay in the top 12? I'd say a 48.90, somewhere around there is my guess. Yeah, okay. McMurray has run a 48.95. He could be in jeopardy of staying in the top 12. Well, you would think Harvick is a really good car. He just ran a flat, a 49 flat. So I have concern with Jimmy Johnson's 49.03. I don't believe Jimmy Johnson's 49.03. Kevin Harvick, those two cars, I think, are going to end up right at the cut line. Ken Block had to play with the throttle a little bit, leaving, leaving the corner, leaving turn one. So early back to the gas and committed, fighting the wheel a little bit, but staying in the gas. But he's still almost a half a second off going down the back straightaway. Most of that, I feel like he lost in turn one. See if he can at this end of the racetrack, turns three and four, completely different. They make more grit. He can make it up at this part of the racetrack. Both side, Kyle 
Bush has set a new fast time. See all that wheel movement on the, on the 88 of Jeff Gordon. It's not going to be good enough, I don't think. Typically, when you see that much wheel movement. There you go. He knew it. I was more out of breath than Jeff Gordon was. One of the slowest laps turned today. There's 49-49 for Jeff Gordon. But to be clear, the only way to lay lap time down and qualify is to drive hard. You have to push the car to its limit. And when you push it to the limit and it won't stick, that's when you see all that wheel movement. That's when you see, you hear the throttle. You hear, you hear them getting off the throttle. You hear them see the wheel movement. That's what that's about. It's about pushing the car past its limit, trying to find lap time. Uh, Jeff, we're now prepared to the 12th. Trevor Bates in the cutoff line. We see Truex in the green. You're about pushing to the limit. Truex jumped in that gas in the first round. That's a good lap going. A lot of guys in the green here. Again, we're referencing 12th now. So Trevor Bain is 12th. The guys in the green could be pushing Bain all the way down. Well, the problem is the name's going to move fast. Yeah. Bain, Texas Stenhouse, Johnson. Those four cars, I think, are all going to be below the cut line here very shortly. Turex goes fifth quickest. Next one to go, Austin Dillon, eighth quickest. So now Stenhouse Jr. on the bubble, but maybe not for long. Biffle runs 14th quickest on his lap, 49-43. Cars still in the boat. Danica Patrick has yet to go. She ran a very fast lap that first run as Newman jumps up to eight. Johnson, I believe, is going to be below the cut line here in just a second. Three, just under three and a half minutes to go in this second round of qualifying for the Sprint Cup Series. Brad Kozlowski, fifth quickest. Remember, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He was fastest in the first round, but wasn't able to back it up in round two. And now, in jeopardy of not advancing. Yeah, I think we're going to have a whole other group of cars. I expect Elliott, Patrick, Blaney, all to be very close to that 12th position as far as lap time. As you see the 24th right up against the wall. So close to the wall. Trying to carry that momentum. He knows how important it is. Will Johnson go back out? Does he have enough time? I don't see how he'll have enough time to make an effective lap. He might get back on the racetrack, but I don't see how he has enough time to get the engine and tires to where they need to be. So I'm really interested. We have three cars that have gone. Patrick, Blaney's making his run right now. As they can before we lose tires down. Blaney's got to have a great turn four to have a shot. Hit a throttle hard, but just wasn't able to carry this direction. And I think Danica Patrick, from what I've seen out of this 10 car qualifying trip, I expect Danica Patrick to remove Kurt Busch from the top 12. If I'm Tony Gibson in the 41 and I think I can get back on the racetrack successfully with the right amount of lap time, or excuse me, uh, temperature and everything, I would be fighting. You know, Chris Busher, I'm not trying to discount Chris Busher. Excellent job moving forward, but it took him a couple runs. And I think that that's going to really hurt his chances right here. You see right now, he's a tenth and a half off, leaving turn two. That's just going to continue to get worse down the back straightaway. Again, if, you, if you're going to have bad corners, they need to be one and three because they lead to short shoots. You have to roll turn two. You have to roll turn four because the straightaways are so long here. If you don't hit them right, it's going to kill your straightaway speed. Kyle Busch is fastest. Kurt Busch right now is 12. That is right above the cut line. It looks like Chris Busher is going to be a little bit slow, so he will not be able to bump Kurt Busch out. But here comes Danica Patrick. Very late. You saw what Danica did. She used all the racetrack leaving on the apron. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I didn't see the 47 do it. Is when she left pit road, she was she was going. She was going as hard as she could. She was going hard enough where she had to use all of the apron to make the turn to get to the back straightaway, trying to carry as much speed as she can get into turn three. Because again, it's about getting into your rhythm. It's about getting the figuring out what your car can and can't do. Because right now this turn four, it's huge. You have to hit this corner right. Because you're coming to the start finish line, you need that momentum working with you. And why have we been watching Danica Patrick? Jimmy Johnson's on the racetrack as well, trying to get a lap in. But it's all kind of come down to Danica Patrick and Kurt Busch. Can Danica run faster than her teammate with 41 of Kurt Busch? This is Jimmy up to speed. He's coming to take a green flag with 30 seconds left. He should easily take a green flag. Should be able to get the green flag. Danica Patrick definitely on the clock. And we're seeing that she is three-tenths of a second off of what Kurt Busch was able to run. Four-tenths of a second off. So she definitely did get through one and two as well as she would have liked. Down the back stretch she goes and entering turn three, already a half a second slower than Kurt Busch. Jimmy Johnson, very, very close. Danica Patrick, eight tenths of a second. She comes out onto the front stretch, she will not be able to gain it up before she gets
gets to the finish line. How do you get off of that at Jimmy Johnson? Seven one hundreds right now behind the 12, uh, 41 of Kurt Busch, looking for a little bit of speed at the center of the racetrack. Jeff, we've talked about how complicated and difficult turns three and four are. Yeah, no question, because the tires are even hotter. You, you, know, you banned earlier, now you got to make a second run. The laps continue, so those tires only get hotter the further the lap goes on. This end of the racetrack easier. It's easier because they have more grip, but the tires are worse because they're hotter. Two tenths of a second off. So as Jimmy Johnson tries a second attempt to get into the top 12, he's not going to be able to make it work. He will be 13th quickest, and his best time was about 100th of a second off of what Kurt Busch was able to run. That's how much he missed it by. Kyle Busch fastest. Yesterday, issues for Kyle Busch as he came up on Patrick Carpentier coming into the turn. That was turn two. Patrick Carpentier didn't expect him to be there. And when Kyle was there, he went around, didn't hit anything. But they did have to work a little bit on the car to get ready to go back out for practice. But now he's fastest in qualifying.